Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of our productivity training videos. In this video, I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look at how we manage our standard operating procedures or SOPs for our business, Minaco. Now, I actually made a video a little while ago sharing how we store SOPs in Asana. This video is really an extension of that. While we do have some SOPs as checklists built as templates in Asana, we also have quite a lot of documentation in Google Drive that explains how we do certain things in the business. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And I also just want to take a sec to acknowledge the dying plant in the background of this video. Uh, some of you have expressed concerns in the comments, which I really appreciate. Unfortunately, when we moved into the rental that we're in now, the plant didn't really handle that journey so well. So it hasn't been doing the best. We will also be moving into our new house that we're building in a couple of months. And unfortunately, the plant won't be making the trip with us. So it'll be in the background for a little while longer, but we will be saying goodbye to the plant very soon. Okay, now that the sad part's out the way, let's get into this video and look at how we manage our standard operating procedures at Minaco. So let me start by explaining what a standard operating procedure or SOP even is and why they're important. So essentially an SOP is like an instruction manual that describes how to complete a certain process. For example, in my business, when I do a tax return every couple of months for goods and services tax, I follow, I read our instructions and I follow the steps every single time we need to export certain data from our e-commerce system. I need to complete certain steps in our accounting software. And I follow the process every time to make sure I don't make a mistake and to make sure I'm not missing an important step. We also have SOPs as checklists in Asana, and I'll link up here a video we made a little while ago sharing how we've done that. And so again, we use the checklist to uh, set ourselves tasks for things like setting up the new contractor's email, setting them up in Calendly and Zoom, getting them to sign an agreement. Again, we just follow the process to make sure we don't miss an important step. So when you hear the phrase standard operating procedure or SOP, just think instruction manual. Now, the main benefit of having an SOP, as I've already said, is that number one, you're not gonna miss important steps. This means you make fewer mistakes and you can be more consistent because you're following the same process every single time. If you think about if you're doing something and every time you do that task, you're doing it in a different way, this is less efficient compared to following the same process which you can optimize and make more efficient every time you do it. For example, if you think about McDonald's, Anywhere you go in the world, you can buy a McDonald's Big Mac and it pretty much tastes the same. This is because they've standardized all their processes and it doesn't matter where they're making that burger, they follow the same process and so they can deliver a very consistent result very efficiently. And when you create these kind of efficiencies in your business, you actually make your business easier to scale and grow because you're saving time and you can put that time and energy back into other things that are actually going to help you to grow further. So let's switch over to the screen and let me show you some of the SOPs we've created and how we've set these up in Google Drive. So here we are inside our Minaco shared drive. We run our business on Google. So we use Google for our email calendar and we use Google Drive for our cloud storage. If you use something else like Microsoft 365, for example, I would just do this in there because you're paying for that cloud storage and service. So we have this shared drive. Our entire team has access to this shared drive so they can all go and access these SOPs. Here's one of them. So we have a consultant SOP. This is the instruction manual that describes how a consultant on our team should work with a client. So you can see actually we've got a table of contents at the top so it's very easy to navigate. And if you're not sure how to do something, you can look at the table of contents and click and easily go to that section. And so you can see this is a detailed written down process. So it explains things like how you get booked for a consulting call and the links we use inside Calendly. I've included screenshots so it's very visual and you can see what the Calendly interface looks like, how that creates a task in Asana. And then it outlines things like when you get booked for a call or what to do on your first call with the client, make sure it's recorded, how to structure the call and all the best practices and processes to follow. 
And if I keep going through here, I've got things like what to do after your call with the client. Um, if we review someone's Pipedrive account, what types of things we look at, how we look after our premier and elite customers, uh, how we can engage Pipedrive and Asana for additional support, responding to emails in our help inbox. So, and, and just some general policies if people don't show up for their appointment and, and that type of thing. So this is essentially a resource that a consultant could look at to see how do I engage with the client? What do I do? And what's the correct process to follow? We also have a sales SOP. So for the sales people on our team who are often consultants, they're doing consulting and sales, it's very similar. It outlines things like how you get booked for a sales call, what links we use in Calendly, uh, how to reschedule the appointment if somebody needs to change the time, the types of questions to ask on the call. So at the start of the call, what to say, additional questions to ask along the way. And then we move down into pitching different options on our website. And I've got links here. And actually, I've even included videos. So this is a video of me actually doing the pitch. So the salesperson could watch that. They can see me delivering the pitch. They can watch that recording and then kind of follow my approach. I've got loads of sample sales calls that we've pre-recorded. So when I onboard a new salesperson, they've got loads of resources they can go and look at to understand how to pitch different options that we offer. Instructions here about how we write proposals, different calls to action, and then common questions that they might get along the way. So again, if you join my team, if you work in sales, you can read this document and it will explain how to complete that sales call and what to do at various steps along the way. Thirdly, I'll show you this administrative assistant. So for the assistant on my team, this one's actually probably my most detailed SOP. It explains things like um, daily habits to follow. So checking your email, checking pipe drive, that type of thing how we book different types of appointments using Calendly. And I've got all of the Calendly links in here, easily accessible. I've even included, you can see here, uh, because we use Text Expander for a lot of our, storing a lot of our links and templates. I've even put in the Text Expander snippet abbreviations that we use. I've got details in here around how to schedule me and offer custom time slots if a Calendly slot doesn't work. Uh, we have, how to triage my email. So my assistant goes through my email. We use various labels for sorting the uh, emails into different folders. Guidelines on how to respond to the email, what type of tone and language to use. My out of office procedure. So if I'm not available, what to do in certain situations if you need urgent help. This is a big section. So common types of emails that we get. So you can see this is how to respond to a new inquiry. So if somebody approaches us and wants help with Asana or Pipedrive, I've got very detailed instructions here on what the assistant needs to do. So the goal is to get the new prospect to book an introductory call. Um, they need to go into Pipedrive, create a deal. They need to respond to the email using certain templates. And then really the no further action is required when the client books their call at that point, I then take over, I do the call. So very detailed instructions on what to do and then when no further action is needed. And so we have lots of common types of emails and how to deal with those. We even have instructions in here on how to charge customers through Stripe if we need to build someone's card, how to update Pipedrive. And you can see in this document, it's very detailed. It explains uh, what fields in Pipedrive to update. I've got screenshots, so it's, it's very visual and they can see what to do. And I like to think of it as an instruction manual. This, you could print this out. You could, you could have it on your desk if you want to read it and you can follow the steps. Um, to make sure that you're not missing an important step. Now to illustrate just how useful this is and how much time it saves us, we have a new member joining our team at the moment. He's gonna be joining in a consulting and sales role. And so I gave him the two SOPs there that I showed you and I said, here they are, read through them. If you have any questions, you can post comments inside the Google, the Google Doc if you're not sure how to do something. I did have a call with him just to explain kind of the key things and I highlighted certain points of the SOP, but he was able to just read those documents, digest everything, and he'll be referring to those once he gets started and actually doing his calls with us. But that has saved me 
a huge amount of time. If you've ever hired someone new, you know just how time consuming it can be to teach them your process and how you like things to be done. So having this documentation with links and videos that they can go watch saves me a huge amount of time. Obviously there's work put into creating this, but once we have the SOP, we can benefit from this time and time again every time we hire someone new. And these documents are live documents. We will update them. I'm, I'm often going back and I'm adding extra recordings or changing things. If we change the process, I'll edit the SOP so it's always up to date and ready for the next person that needs to look at it. Now, as I mentioned, we do have some SOPs set up as task templates in Asana. So let me show you that and let me just touch on when I would put something in Asana as a checklist versus what goes into a written SOP. So here's one of our task templates in Asana for onboard, onboarding a new contractor. And I've set this up in Asana as a checklist because when I follow this process, I actually want to assign tasks to myself. So I'm gonna do these first few tasks. I'm gonna create the new email in Google Workspace, set them up in Calendly, update Pipedrive, etc. So the different, the key thing here is I want to literally give myself a task to go and complete something, which I will then check off. And then for the person that I'm onboarding, I will assign these tasks to them because I need them to actually complete an action. And again, they will check off and complete those tasks once they're done. Now compare that to if I go back to the sales SOP, here's the common types of questions a salesperson would ask on their call when talking to a new prospect. Now, I wouldn't put this in Asana because when they're on the call, I don't want them checking off tasks in Asana. I just want them thinking about these types of questions. And then once they sort of have done a few sales calls, they're probably gonna remember most of these questions. They're not even gonna to have to refer to the SOP every single time. And so because I don't need a checklist, I just have this as a written process in this document. Or if I go to these sample sales calls, these are just recordings. I don't have this, I don't need this as a task template. There's nothing for them to really complete here. There's no action. It's more just, this is a resource, this is a library, almost like a knowledge base for us of like previous recordings you can go and watch if you want to learn more about pitching a specific option. We also have templates in Asana for things like making a YouTube video. I've shared this on my channel many times. So we have things like making an Asana video. These are the things we need to do. We need to record it, upload it, prepare the description, create the thumbnail. And again, these tasks get assigned to myself, members of my team, and I actually want to give them a task which they need to go and complete. And they also need to do that on a specific due date. So that's why we actually have this particular process or SOP as a checklist in Asana. Setting up these SOPs as the documents that I showed you there and the checklists in Asana has been a big focus of mine this year in 2024 because I'm really trying to put better systems and processes in place. I want to be able to empower my team and make them as least reliant on me as possible. You know, when people come to me and they ask me questions, Paul, how do I do this? That to me is a cue that I should have this written down somewhere so they actually can go to the SOP and they can Figure, the, figure out the answer themselves. I don't wanna be the bottleneck where I have to be helping people and answering all their questions. Not because I don't want to and I don't wanna support my team, it's just I don't want to be the hang up for them. And I spoke about this recently on my podcast. I talked about the importance of getting things out of your head. You know, so many business owners we talk to, they, they say, oh, like, I need to create better systems and processes because right now it's all in my head. Like, I know how to do that thing and my team don't. So writing down an SOP or creating a checklist in Asana is a great way of getting the process out of your head. And even the process of creating the SOP is useful because you by having to write it out, you have to think about how do we, what is the simplest way to complete that process? So it actually helps you to simplify the process itself by writing out the process, if that makes sense. And if you can do this, you're empowering your sales team, you're removing yourself as the bottleneck, and you're putting in the systems and processes you need to scale and grow your business. So I hope this behind the scenes look has been useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.